Hi, and welcome to Renovate Innovate channel. Today I'm going to walk you through some of the tools that I find are the most essential, especially if you're a first time home owner or you're just looking to get your own tools together to do a few jobs at home. Um, you will amass many tools <laughs> through, your, through your life, um, but the few that you need to get yourself going are going to be the ones in this video. First tool you're going to need, screwdrivers. You're going to use them for just about every job Every, everything's held together with nuts and bolts, it's mostly screws. You're going to be using them for fixing your doors, door handles, numbers on your new house and the front kitchen cupboards. The quality varies and there's an immense amount of different screwdrivers. The quality that you buy for your first set will be determined by your budget and I always recommend buy the best that you can afford. Um, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver, there are loads of different sizes, and you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. I use a drill driver and the ratchet screwdriver. These are the ones I use most. But I use them together with one of these kits. I'll open this up and you'll see what's inside there. These kits come with an array of different sized screwdriver heads and also drill bits which you're going to use. Um, you've got the Phillips, the posi drive and the flat heads in different sizes, the most common sizes. Um, and I recommend you getting a ratchet screwdriver. Just saves loads of loads of work. <laughs> um, it's the next step up from one of these before you get one of these, but you use these a lot. You keep them in your toolbox and they're always going to be used. Uh, you can also move on to electrical safety screwdrivers. Again, I've got a set here with interchangeable heads. If, uh, if you're not competent enough that you're going to use these, just don't buy them. Use these, but just not on electrical appliances. So yeah, screwdrivers, screwdriver bits, drill bits, very important, essential for your home DIY kit. Um, and also the hammer, the minefielder. <laughs> Hammers out there you can buy. Um, I myself, I've got more than what I brought here. There are stacks of different hammers. Claw hammers, straight, ham straight claw hammers, Thor hammers. <laughs> I, I, I like my hammers <laughs> and roofing hammers. But all you're going to need to get yourself going is a nice lightweight. You can go to one of your local hardware shops and buy yourself just a hammer. Go and pick it up and feel it. Make sure it's not too heavy for you. And uh, you'll know what hammer you'll like. The hammer chooses the person. <laughs> is that right? Uh, maybe not. But this one I've had for years. It's always in the tool belt or in the toolbox and it's just used for everything. Um, moving on from there, I think next thing we'll we'll do is levels, spirit levels or, or plumb lines, we'll do both. To start off with a little box level, torpedo level, this size will be enough, get your shelf up, um, you could possibly put up a stud wall with that but you, you'll be struggling. There are different size levels, I've got another one here, this one's a tougher, tougher level, this one you, it's been on site for years, been thrown around and it stands the test of time, not necessarily when you're starting out to get the most expensive of everything, but just the best you can afford and the quality that you think is right. Again, go and come have a look in the shop and pick it up and see what you think is the best. Next thing I think you'll need, some adjustable spanners. These again, these are great quality spanners. Do all, all the things around the house with radiators, tap, leaking taps you can fix. Simple things you'll need all the time. Also the adjustable ones. It saves having to have all those different spanners that weigh down your toolbox. You might need a spanner this size, this size. This one will get pretty much all of them that you're going to need around the house. And two, I always reckon at least two. I've got too many, I think, to. <laughs> but one for holding on to the piece that you're working on and one for tightening up. So I recommend two always. Looks like there's going to be a lot in your toolbox. <laughs> you're going to need a big toolbox. But also pliers. These are a compound plier. They allow you to press extra weight on the thing you're using because I find that without them and with cheaper pliers sometimes is your pliers will slip off the thing that you're using and you end up with your fingers getting caught and it's not a nice thing to experience but I find that doesn't happen so much with the compound pliers. I've also got some side cutting pliers I use for cables and wires. They, they get used a lot and they get used in conjunction with the electrical screwdrivers I've got there. A radiator key a common thing, normally find it in your kitchen drawer I suppose, but keep one in your toolbox, you'll, 
of all these things, always keep them in your toolbox, you know where they are. And that's just for bleeding the air out of your radiators, get your radiators working. I've been trying to think of the, the jobs you'll be doing with these tools, and I think putting up pictures and shelves, that'll be the kind of things you'll be doing. When you come to marking out your, where you want things to be, you want tape for marking the wall rather than marking the wall itself. You can put the tape on the wall and peel it off. But you're also going to need a good quality tape measure to make sure you're putting it where you want it. Um, this is a five metre tape measure. You don't need to go too long, just to, but you want to get a tape measure. I suggest with a good, what they call standout. So it doesn't flop over and fall and you can measure really long things with this. This is at, this is at two metres now and it stays nice and straight and it locks off. It's nice and tucked. It's got a good hook on it if you're measuring things. Good quality tape measure. Other jobs you'll be doing, flat pack furniture. You want a good knife to open your boxes with, safely. With a blade I recommend that folds away. Keep your fingers away from the blade. Always close it up when not in use. But another job, flat pack furniture, Allen keys. Sometimes they come with them. Over time you're gonna lose that Allen key. You're gonna tighten it up. You're gonna, oh, where is it? Keep them in your toolbox or in your bit box and you're always there ready to nip them up when it comes that time to need to nip it up. <laughs> Putting up a shelf, that's another job that the next job maybe you'll you need to do. Putting up a sign on the front of your house, your number of, you know, whatever. But you're gonna at one point soon gonna need to drill into a wall. A uh, plastic board wall, brick wall, block wall. You might not know what kind of wall it is, but you're gonna need a drill that can deal with all those things. This is an 18 volt uh, drill running on a four amp power battery, which is a big battery. Not necessary to start with for DIY. You can go down to a 12 volt drill, a nice smaller, smaller body, um, easy to handle, especially if you're working above your head. It's a nice lightweight drill. Um, it's got the settings for the amount of torque or power it's gonna put through the drill. And also it's got a hammer function, a drill function and a screwdriver function. Again, a good quality drill. You don't want this slipping out in the wrong mode when you're using it, when you're trying to screw, screw something in and it jumps to the hammer mode. Good quality. Go to the shop, pick it up, feel how heavy it is. See if you like it. 12 volt, good quality, best you can afford. That's what I'd recommend. And along with that, you're gonna also need the drill bits. Back to my drip bit box that I use for the screwdriver. Also got a range of bits, bits from Freeze block, brick, metal, wood, plastic, all work with that. Essential piece of kit, really. It'll be very safe when you use it. If you are using it above your head, make sure to wear protective glasses. Um, bits flying off. Moving on from that, your toolbox is getting more and more full now. Eye protection, very important. It's all really important to get PPE, gloves, Safety, working gloves, goggles, ear defenders, that speak for themselves really. You need, you need them in your toolbox. And also on a safety note, um, when you are drilling into the walls, it's good to check the walls. Here I've got a little uh, stud detector. We're looking for studs on a plasterboard wall. But it also checks for voltage hidden in that wall. Um, if you buy one, read the instructions, understand the instructions, know how to use it, test it. Make sure you're confident that it's working correctly. There are ways it will show you how to use it in the instructions and then you're, you should be fine to go and use it on your own project. And again, we've also got a non-contact voltage testing, which is ideal for checking that electrical devices have got no uh, power running to them. Um, it glows up. Hang on, does it work? Yeah, it glows up when it detects that bit of electricity, that static it's picking up there. Really important to have before you start drilling into walls or changing a broken light bulb or something like that. Um, moving on from there. Oh, let's go to saws. I don't know why I did that. I got excited. <laughs> saws. Again, there's so many different kinds of saws. Saws for wood, metal, plastic again, different amount of teeth. TPI, these saws are sold in, which is teeth per inch. Per inch. And again, you get a coarse blade or a fine blade saw. I recommend having one of each. One for the rough stuff or one for the fine stuff. Depending on what your skill level is and what you're gonna be doing, 
depends on what you're going to use. But I recommend having one of each, maybe a, a hacksaw uh, as well for cutting metal piping. When you come for cutting pieces of wood, you want to cut them nice and square. I recommend a good quality square or engineer square. It gives you that perfect 90 degree angle to cut along. But with these saws as well, which I do trust, they come with a, a 90 degree a square edge and a 45 degree square edge cut into that saw. So you can use that for marking out straight edges and at 90 degrees and straight edges at 45 degrees. So you, you may not need to use a square, but depending on your project, what you're doing, you need something to mark up that square edge. Chisels are definitely a thing you're going to be using, I'd say. Hanging a door, that's pretty much what they use for around the house mostly, but I use them so so many different things and so many different chisels, ones that you can strike on the side. Uh, demolition chisels, but, well, attacking the house really. <laughs> but also I've got a sharper chisel set that I keep nice and, nice and safe in this box, just for chiseling wood for hinges and locks. It's good to have a varied, varied amount of chisels. Keep them sharp. If you're going to use them for chiseling wood for your hinges and your locks, don't go knocking off nail heads and screw heads with it and blunting it. You're going to go and buy new chisels. Get a chisel for demolition and then get a good set. It always stays nice in your box. Moving on as well, you're going to need to get yourself ooh, some kind of screw box. Again, this will be another video. We'll go through this. It's such a massive amount of screws and fixings and fittings. Here's just a small example of screws you can buy. It's not even worth mentioning these are the basics to get because it's just massive. Okay, so keep checking back to the channel for our fixtures and, and fittings uh, video, which will be coming up soon. Um, now moving on. Next essential tool, cork gun. They, again, these come in many different qualities. They all do the same thing. They get the tube of silicon or cork and they squeeze it out, but different quality ones last longer. The higher the quality, they're gonna last longer. You're gonna need these for putting cork on when you're painting, sealing around your bath, around your shower, and your sink. Um, better quality, again, that you, you, you buy. It's gonna last you a lot longer. There's nothing worse than coming to just, I'll do that job and your cork gun's <laughs> broken or not working. So get a good quality one that'll last. Keep it oiled. Yeah, keep it in your toolbox, you know where it is. Um, other essentials. Um, little bits. I keep a mirror on a stick. Been replaced by the, by the uh, smartphones now. You can take videos of things around the corners. Again, you can use your smartphone instead of a, a level. Um, what else have I got in here? Oh, I've got a scraper, scraper blades. I'm putting filler on a wall. Scraping whatever needs to be scraped up. Bit around your architrave, bit of paint, bit of wood. Use these, don't use your chisels. Use a scraper blade. This one's got a built-in hammer as well. This is a great universal tool. And also a little nail puller on there. Uh, yeah, great things to have. Extra long screwdriver, I think it's fantastic. Um, should be in everyone's toolkit. Great for getting up high, less fatigue when you're working, or down low, saves your back, and also in difficult to reach corners, kitchen cabinets especially, when you're putting together flat pack furniture. I think this is great, it's a great thing. Didn't know I needed it until I got one, now I've got one. I think everybody should have one. Um, and that's about all I can think of. For the essentials, I hope you do go and get yourself a toolbox, a good sturdy toolbox and fill it with good quality tools and you keep doing little jobs for yourself um, and you add to your toolbox as you go along through your journey of, of owning your home or whatever it is you, you're getting your toolbox for. Right, so there we have it. That's all the tools, the essential tools I think for your starter toolkit. Um, check out our other videos so you can see how to use these tools. There'll be plenty of demonstration videos there to give you that confidence to use them for yourselves. If you've liked this video, hit that like button, um, click the notification bell, and subscribe to the channel. That'll be great. Thank you very much.